This is the second video in the Hydrological Analysis Lecture Series. In this, we'll talk about basic derived surfaces from the digital elevation model. We'll talk about slope, aspect, flow direction, and the sinks, establishing where the sinks are within the surface. These are all derived from the LIDAR data, and they're important in our hydrological analysis. Slope is basically pretty easy to explain. It's rise over run. How far does the elevation uh, uh, increase over the, the horizontal distance? And if we have rise over run, we can calculate times 100, we can calculate the percent slope. Or in degrees, we could take the ratio, the rise over run ratio, and use the arctangent function to figure out the, the, what is the degrees slope. And how we do that, this is showing the third order finite distance slope calculation. There are several others, the four nearest. Uh, but in this particular one, we're, uh, we're looking at uh, calculating the slope of this value. So we're using all the neighbors to calculate that value using this formula. Now how we do it is we calculate the x direction, doubling this row, and we wind up with a value, a ratio of 3.58 and we calculate the y value, doubling the center, all right, so you, you get the idea, so we're doubling the center. Now you notice we're, we're uh, dividing this by eight times, because what we have eight calculations with, the, uh, with our cell size, and this is assuming a 30 meter cell size, all right, to get a ratio of, of minus 0.1.58. Then we take those two values, square them, add them together, and take the square root, and we wind up with 0.39. Then we use that, we look that up on our tables to find the arc tangent of that, which is 21 degrees. So the, uh, the tangent of 21 degrees is 0.39. So our slope is 21 degrees. So the slope at this the value is 21. Now, we have a little caveat about the units being the same. Aspect is a little bit more complicated but we're, we're still using the same sort of calculation of looking at the, we're trying to calculate that center cell, and it's the direction of change of the z value. So we're seeing is which way the slope is facing, basically. And it's measured in degrees, so it's 0 to uh, 360, measured clockwise from north. And here's our little calculation for that. Now once we know the slope, how steep the hill is, and which way it's facing, and here's the elevation values we were talking about. Here's a graphical where the high is red. Once we know how steep it is and which way it, the slope is facing, we can start talking about flow direction. So we're talking about where is the where is fl the flow direction? What is where is water moving from this cell? And you can see in this cell the water is clearly moving this way. So that's the flow direction. Here's the flow direction. You get the idea. From this cell, this 58, uh, the, the flow direction is moving in this direction. So, and you'll notice that these are uh, flow direction values that are categorical. That these values are moving in, they're established in north, south, east, and west, or northeast, southeast. So they're, they're no longer in degrees as uh, uh, in as in the slope and the aspect. Now as I mentioned this is the D8 flow direction so we're classifying the direction into eight uh, groups uh, and we established them as 1, 4, 8, so on uh, up to 28 to, to talk about the direction whether it's flowing north, whether it's flowing east, whether it's flowing uh, southeast or south. Okay, so now if we've talked about slope, aspect, and flow direction, we want to talk about displaying the DEM, how we could display the DEM, how we could show the raw DEM in ways that help us understand what's there. And we use another derived surface called hill shading, where we would simulate the shadows. We would establish sun in a particular location, and the sun at a certain angle and location, and we would we would uh, create a surface which shows us those shadows. And this is an example of a hill shaded, uh, an obliquely simulated illumination is the 50 cent word for this. 
and here we've put it over our digital elevation model where you can see the colors showing the higher elevation and we're showing the shadows so we can see sort of a 3D version of the relief. Now here we've put this over the, the topo map and you can get an idea of how the topo, the contours which are derived on the topo map, are being represented. And you can see that the topo is a little bit more general than uh, the topo contours are a little bit more general than our detail. There's detail here, for example, that's not being revealed, or detail here that's not being revealed in the, the contours, the general contours from the topo map. Now, the basics of hill shading, so I'm saying we're, we're trying to establish where the sun is. So the first thing is we have to establish is where is the sun, where is the illumination? Is it in the northwest, the northeast, southwest? So the direction of the sun. Then we have to establish the altitude. And what happens if the sun is lower? There'll be more shadows. If the sun's directly overhead, there'll be less shadows. So you get the, the basic idea. And we, the, we establish these all as azimuths. Okay? Now this is a little bit of an idea. And as we move the sun, to different locations, whether they be uh, in the northeast or northwest or different altitudes, we can control the amount of shadows that were being displayed in our hill shading. Now I've got some examples here of, of the hill shading. Here I'm at the, the, the sun is at 315 with a 45 angle and you get an idea of it look. Now I kept the sun in the sole location and I moved the sun further up overhead and I'm looking down into the ditches and you can see in uh, the importance of a 70 degree altitude we can see the the water courses a little more directly than we do when the sun is lower on the horizon. Now here we move to an 80 degree altitude and almost directly overhead and you can see how those water uh, courses actually just jump right out at you. So you get an idea of how different hillshade values, both location of the sun and, and altitude, can make a difference in your representation. Here we move the, the sun to 90 degrees due south, looking south from the south, uh, excuse me, from the east, and here we move it to the south. So you're getting an idea of how the shadows change depending on the location of the sun and the altitude. This is all called hillshade. It's a derived surface from the, the digital elevation model. You get a, a basic idea. Now there's several different methods you can use hillshade in ArcGIS to display that the shading. The, uh, the hillshading that many people do is that they're actually using the layer property. So you're taking your um, digital elevation model and you're using the hillshade effect and you're controlling that uh, in the data frame properties you're controlling the height of the sun and the altitude so it's a temporary illumination. The second one would be in the image analysis window where you're actually controlling the the hill shade effect. At this point you're able to uh, also control the the contrast, the gamma or transparency and brightness so this is a, a very useful way of displaying shadows also. None of these are applied to the original. Nothing is created from this. This is just for displaying. Now when we move to method 3 in spatial analysis or 3D analyst, you can you actually calculate a new surface and here you'll fill in those same values uh, and the Z factor is where you would change from meters to feet if you put in 3.8 uh, in, uh, in the proper calculations for what, how many feet in a meter. So you're getting uh, the little idea of how this is calculated. Now the next piece, and this is back to our method one where we're displaying the hill shade in the layer properties temporarily, we could be changing the stretch value of the values we're stretching our color. So increase the visual contrast in our we can also change the gamma value, the gamma stretch, and we could increase the, the level of contrast for the mid-gray levels. So this is the general stretch of all the values, uh, the high, and, high to the low, and this is uh, affecting the mid-level, the middle tones. And all this is to enhance your the ability to visualize aspects of the digital elevation model. Now there's some problems with hill shading. And the problems 
are related to the angles of the light source and the fact that features often are lost in the shadows. So when you're looking at this particular feature here, there's a shadow and features are being lost in that. The other thing is the, the bottom of the ditches can be distorted right, from this, this uh, process. So it's a useful process, but there are some caveats. And I have a little animation here to show you. So this is your line of sight, what you're seeing. So you're missing this area here. Okay, the sun shining the shadow hits the hill, and this is all hidden. And then the distance that you're receiving is the slope distance rather than the on the ground distance. So there's some distortion in the features and the shadows and hiding of. Now, the trick with all these surfaces, slope, aspect, hill shade, is to start putting them together. Here's the slope where the steep. You know, so it's steepest at the white areas, and it's flat in the dark areas. If we put that slope on top of the hillshade with some transparency so we can see through it, you get a much clearer idea of what's happening. You can see the steep areas, but you're getting a little idea of the features because you're seeing the shadows from the hillshade. Next, we can drape the hillshade and the, or the hillshade and the slope over the, the aerial photographs or the satellite imagery, in this case the digital orthoquads. So we could get a, a better idea of what's happening in the landscape. So not only do we have the orthophoto, but we can see the relief from, from the hillshade calculation. Now why do we do this? Hydro, hydrographical uh, identification. So what are the problems with it? We talked about a few of them, about changes in the distance, change, hiding shadows, uh, and there's ways to better exploit this information, assuming some of the problems. And the what what Sean has taken on as, a, as his personal mission is a way to uh, color and change the contrast and some of the details of the the uh, way the DEM is displayed with both the hillshade and the DEM itself to better reveal the hydrographic features. Since what we're trying to do is we're trying to establish the hydro hydrography within our landscape, we need to find a simple way to, to set the parameters of our illumination, of our shadows, of our, our colors to help reveal that information. So, Sean developed a technique that brings out the details in the landscape, that helps bring out through a combination of colors and other methods. And it's especially useful for relief and orientation of physiographic features. This is the process that he has created and recommends, and he calls it FIRE, where he's displaying the digital elevation model underneath with the hill shade on top with a series of colors so that he can uh, very clearly show the hydrographic features. You can see they're dark so they jump right out at you as well as the the high elevation you see in the yellow and you get a lot of detail and are able, we're able to see a lot more in the red band so we're able to reveal a lot of the aspects of the the middle elevation but the key is this, this dark jumps right out at you. In our lab exercise, we'll show you how to create this and set these parameters.